I've worked with a little bit of everything. I grew up in a small town down in Alabama and worked in construction. My stepdad was a contractor, so I worked <laughs> for him every summer since I was 11. So I was really familiar with working with my hands, working with wood. Uh, when I finally discovered sculpture, it just, it really fit me. In college, I, I tried every different material I could find. A guy off campus that I apprenticed with I actually cast work at a bronze foundry down in West Palm Beach that had an opening. So I took a gig uh, after college working down there at a bronze foundry, learning uh, like lost wax, casting, and making investment molds, and plaster. I worked for the Bronze Foundry for about two or three years and then uh, went off on my own. I uh, moved up to Nashville and made, oh man, a crazy amount of work. Probably two or three different series of, uh, you know, 20, 30 paintings and sculptures each of every different material that I could get my hands on. Just looking for something unique and that I thought was my own. but. Everything I would make, I just saw somebody else's voice in it, you know. Um, like a musician has to have their own voice. An artist, man, even more so, has to have their own style. Or you're, you know, who are you? You're just regurgitating other, you know, people's work you look up to. So... I did that for, gosh, another two or three years in, uh, in Nashville and drove myself a little crazy because I, I was relentless, man. I did not, I couldn't sleep, you know, I couldn't rest um, until I found something that I thought was, was my own. And honestly, I got to a point where I could not find it. And I was so dark and so angry and frustrated that I gave up. And uh, I said, it's not worth it. You know, I'm, I'm bitter. I hate my life. My friends can't stand me. You know, my family wants to you know, leave me. So uh, I gave up. I burned a lot of my work. And that night, I passed out. I was exhausted. And um, slept for about 12 hours. But I had the most vivid dream I've ever had in my life. And uh, in the middle of it, I saw one of these sculptures out of crayons, you know, um, <laughs> it was epic, man, because the, uh, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art had actually contacted me in, in the dream and asked me, you know, for a retrospective of my work, and uh, I was like, great, man, so what is it that you want, you know, me to focus on? And uh, They're like, well, we want a little bit of everything, so in the dream, um, I got to go to the show and wandered through and there were sculptures of every different material you would find, you know. Um, and uh, as I wandered through, I finally came to one of these little sculptures out of crayons and I woke right up. Had the sketchbook by the bed and um, I've been making it for 10 years now. So kids, you know, can really latch into it you know, but adults, once they figure out what it is, they're like, whoa, yeah. And, um, you know, so I can kind of have a, a fun, happy medium, but still interject larger, sometimes even dark ideas, um, you know, but it's kind of like my misleading hook, you know, to where you think it's going to be, this is bright, happy, fun stuff. You know, everybody's familiar with kids will love this. And then there could be some darker meaning. I've been making uh, the, the sculptures for so long that I started out pretty small to where um, when I first started out, I would order them online in these custom boxes of 64 crayons of a single color. And, um, you know, that would get you just so far. So I was making very small sculptures. 
um, you know, things like a redhead or um, a silverware instead of underwear. And then eventually when I had really large ideas and feeling comfortable with the medium, and I was like, man, it's just so expensive to order that many. Um, you know, that I, I would order so many at a time that I would get boxes and boxes from Crayola. I, I tried other mediums, but they smelled the best and they had the highest melting point. You know, and any other kind of crayon just felt inauthentic. Even I, I cast some of my own, you know, making my own wax, but it just felt as though I was trying to do a, a one-off of Crayola. Crayola customer service finally called me and were like, who are you? You know, what are you doing? And uh, I told them and they just didn't get it at all. I think the most successful times are when I'm actually creating something like an installation uh, that's so large that you don't recognize it. It's crayons until you're in it, you know, and then it's, it becomes beyond cute or clever. You know, then it becomes iconic and transformative. This body of work, more than anything, I've been putting it out at my kind of favorite haunts around town where I like to go and get a drink or just uh, get something to eat. And um, if I can get away with putting a tag out there, these kind of they're kind of like my totem animals that give me comfort um, just from being in this urban jungle, you know, and, and finding peace, you know, seeing a, a fox or a bear across the way is, uh, it's, it's really satisfying, you know, like they're following me around, you know, or just looking to uh, communicate something to me. I, I had heard this great interview on uh, probably NPR about this condition called synesthesia where people hear sounds and see certain colors, like you know, it's documented. And so I started thinking about animals and the whole animal kingdom, even nature, communicating in this spectrum of color that had meaning, specific meaning to all the different beings or you know, living things that were open to seeing it. And man, it just opened doors because it's got this great mystery to me. And working with color, it's always exciting to find something that lets you speak in a new way of your own mythos.